do? Good afternoon. My name is Rod McMillan and I'm chairman of the Audit Committee. I now call to order the April 11, 2023 meeting of the Audit Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of the committee, at discretion and after consultation with staff liaison, may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's audit committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcast from Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion is applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. As a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Jamison or Ms. Barr if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Lichter. Present. Ms. Joes. Present. Mr. McMillian. Present. Thank you. A quorum being present, will we we will begin. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Barr. Present. Ms. Stevens. Present. Ms. Manna. Present. Mr. Fletcher. Present. Mr. Street. Here. Ms. Sample. Here. Ms. Crew. No, OK. Uh, Mr. Edwards. Ms. Smith. Mr. Hartlove. Present. Mr. Kirby. Present. Are there any other attendees present that I did not recognize? Hearing no additional names, I turn the meeting back to you, Mr. McMillian. Thank you, Ms. Jamison. Item two, opening remarks. Good afternoon. If committee members have questions that are outside the scope of the reports presented this afternoon, please email Ms. Barr or me with your questions. We will follow up with appropriate individuals to get the answers to your questions. Item number three, approval of minutes. The live video footage of our last meeting represents the meeting, the minutes of the meeting. The minutes stand approved as recorded. Item number four, new business. Ms. Barr, please introduce Mr. Kerbeam. on mute. Good afternoon. The collaboration between an organization's risk management team and the internal audit department is a critical one as we both are involved with identifying risks. And during our risk assessment process, internal audit identifies and assesses both the likelihood and potential of various risks to the organization. We identify internal controls to determine how adequate they are in reducing risk to ensure residual risk is at manageable levels. Enterprise risk management is a framework for managing overall organizational risk, ranging from ensuring employee safety and securing sensitive data to stopping financial fraud. And today we have Mr. James Kirby, Director of Risk Management, here this afternoon to provide a brief overview of the focus of risk management, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Kirby. Thanks, Ms. Barr, for having me, and I appreciate the Audit Committee's time. Uh, Ms. Barr requested I come to this meeting to talk about risk management, and I am very passionate about this subject. Just to give you a little background about myself, I have about 30 years of risk management experience prior to coming to BCPS, and in 2019, I was voted Public Entity Risk Manager of the Year through Prima. In August of 2022, I was appointed Director of Risk Management for BCPS. Prior to accepting the role, I did my due diligence on BCPS and came across the Baltimore County Public Schools Operational Efficiency Report dated September 7, 2021. In that report, Recommendation 3-12 on page 232 indicates BCPS should develop a comprehensive risk management strategy. This strategy would include a system-wide approach that coordinates and aligns current practices and enlarges the scope of risk management to include threats that have not been adequately addressed. In addition, the position would be created of risk management, or excuse me, risk manager that would report to the chief of staff. This was a tier one recommendation 
which meant the recommendation should have a high priority for the BCPS staff to implement. The report further indicated a director of risk management role would take the position beyond what's known as traditional, traditional risk management to enterprise risk management. This new role should participate in ongoing task force, strategic management decisions, and be a vital part of the entire organization. The function should report to a senior staff level, preferably a cabinet level position. The school's district should create an annual strategic plan relative to risk. Furthermore, newly created district initiatives would be evaluated from a comprehensive and strategic risk perspective. In addition, risk management discussions should be included in cabinet meetings to ensure that key internal stakeholders are identifying and controlling risk within their respective operations. The efficiency report clearly spells out the need and how BCPS should switch to an enterprise risk management framework. The job description posted for the director of risk management outlined all of these duties. However, during the interview process, it was made clear to me that this position's primary focus would be on absent management reporting to the executive director of human resource administration and compliance and not the duties as listed or report to a cabinet level position as suggested. This structure has risk management fragmented throughout the organization with no clear ownership of the process. Recently, an opportunity has been presented to me to be more fully engaged in risk management and utilize my background, which made me come to the conclusion that I would need to step down as risk manager from BCPS to pursue this other option. I got to the point where I didn't feel like the way I define success, I could be successful as the risk manager for BCPS based on where the position was located within the organization. As BCS moves forward in filling my position, I truly believe reconsideration needs to be given to the efficiency report recommendations dated September 7th, 2021. Based on the issues I've seen, this position should report directly to the superintendent with a dotted line reporting structure to the board. All related risk management functions should be combined into one department reporting to the director of risk management. And as most are aware on this call, the general role of the board of directors is to provide a high level oversight of corporate activities and performance. With that, I would pose the following five questions for the board to think about as you contemplate that general role. The first question is, what is BCPS's risk appetite? Meaning how much risk is BCPS willing to take to achieve its strategic objectives? Number two, what are the top 10 risks to BCPS? Number three, who are the risk owners for those risks? Number four, what are the current mitigation strategies? And number five, how does BCPS evaluate emerging risk? With that, I'll take any questions related to enterprise risk management and risk management in, ge in general, excuse me. Committee members, any questions? I, I have a question. Yes, please, Ms. Lichter. So I guess I wasn't aware of the context when you first context when you first started. So um, so I apologize for asking you to repeat some of it, but so you are leaving BCPS. Do I understand Correct. that correct? Correct. Okay. And how long were you with us? Uh, seven months. Okay. And the reason that you stated that you're leaving is because of the way the reporting structure? There's two. I, I got an opportunity to fully engage in risk management. And two, the reporting structure here doesn't enable me to be successful from a risk management perspective, in my opinion. Okay. Um, so then your purpose for coming here today was just to let us know what your suggestions are for improvement as we move forward? Correct. I, I think that as part of the board's responsibilities, risk management needs to be reported to the board. There should be some sort of understanding from a board perspective are, as to what are the top 10 risks of the organization. 
and the board should be aligned because if you're not aligned, then how can you focus your resources effectively? So at some point, someone needs to bring to the board, what are your risk? What is our risk appetite? The board needs to agree on that risk appetite. So then you can get to the point of making sure you're managing those risks accordingly. And it works with internal auditing because auditing and risk is like a sibling relationship. Auditing helps with the compliance. In previous organizations, what I've done is as I've gone through my risk assessments, I've worked with auditing to say, hey, here are 10 mitigation strategies that this department has outlined. As you audit that department, can you confirm that they're doing what they say they're supposed to be doing? And then they would report back to me. Or if auditing did an audit of the department and something was out of line or unusual, they could come to risk and say, hey, this doesn't appear right. Can you review this from a risk perspective? So um, at this point, who did you report to? The, the, the Executive Directive of Human Resource Administration and Compliance. And the, then who, who is that? Uh, Bashir James. Okay, I just wanted to double check. Okay. Yeah. And the efficiency report recommended um, the chief of staff. The chief of staff. Do you agree with the chief of staff as the person that that person will report to? In this organization, I think it needs to be the superintendent with a dotted line to the board. Okay. All right. Because Thank anytime you. you get into a silo, then your position can be compromised. Okay. Thank you for answering those questions. I know that. Oh, no problem. Okay, Ms. Joes, any questions? No questions, Mr. McMillian. Okay, Mr. Kirby, I, I, I want to thank you for the service that you gave BCPS and the fact that you're, you know, you attended element at least elementary school with us. Uh, but I'm I'm sad that a man with your experiences are leaving. But however, I understand, you know, when options present themselves and and other challenges are out there that's, that people need to pursue those. So thank you very much for your service and thank you for your report. Ms. Barr, would you like to add anything to Mr. Kerbeam's comments? Uh, now I would just like to echo your comments. I was really looking forward to uh, working with Mr. Kerbeam and I do agree with um, the reporting structure when you look at where enter enterprise risk management should be in an organization um it's not where he's he's sitting right now and um i think once once we get there it'll be good for the entire organization and like he said there's a sibling relationship and i wanted to point that out that um once we hire mr kerbeam's replacement i do intend to continue to work very closely with that individual to make sure that um you know our all risks are being covered within the organization and that we're managing things so that we're able to accomplish the goals in, in whatever they are with the uh, future superintendent and with this current board. So thank you. Yeah, and th thank you, Mr. Kirby, for making those suggestions to us. And hopefully, uh, you know, here in the next couple of months, but, you know, we're, we're going through a lot, but hopefully we can try to implement some of your suggestions. Thank you very much for your service. Oh, thank you. And, and I appreciate the time. Have a great rest of your evening. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good luck with your new endeavors. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Barr and Mr. Hartlove, please proceed with external auditor contract. Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> in accordance with the audit committee charter, the committee will participate in the selection of the external auditors hired by the board, considering independence and effectiveness and recommend the selection to the board for approval. Additionally, the charter indicates that the committee will recommend requests for any consulting services to be performed by the external auditors to the board. So in that vein, I've asked Mr. Hartloff to provide an overview of the terms of the contract with the board's current external auditors, Clifton Larson Allen, to determine how soon any action may be required to be taken by this committee related to the external audit function. So I will now turn it over to Mr. Hartlow. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barr. Um, good evening, 
uh, committee members. Uh, the the current our current uh, auditor Clifton Larson Allen, we are um, we are in a contract with. It's actually a cooperative contract. It's a piggyback contract through um, through the county. The county um, they bid this out um, a few years back. Uh, I think it was in 2017, and uh, when they bid it, they bid the they bid uh, auditing services for the county government, for the library, I believe, for the community college, and for the school system all at the same time. Um, that contract, uh, we're in our last year, and that will um, handle. Uh, we have a contract with them through May. 21st of 2024 that allows for the audit of uh, this current fiscal year that we're in that will close June 30th uh, 2023 that audit um, we're they're actually doing preliminary work now but that will really kick in this summer and into the fall single audit will be uh, in the late fall early winter so they are comfortably able to do this uh, next audit within the, the contract that we currently have, but we are going to have to go um, into a new contract for the next for the FY24 year. So we have a little bit of time, not a ton of time, but a little bit of time. My understanding is that the county government does um, like us to have the same auditor um, as they do because we are uh, for their statements we are a component unit so it makes it, it makes for um, a lot of efficiencies uh, that way they will what i would advise at this point is that we follow that same process let them do the the uh, the um, the bid um, which i'm sure will take place either this summer or this fall um, see who they come up with and at that point in time, we can either piggyback that contract, um, or if we're not if if we're not satisfied, we could always uh, bid it out on our own at that point. So that's kind of the background information. Hopefully, that all made sense. Bottom line is to answer the the the, the questions. Next year's aud the audit of the current year that we're in, we would call it next year's audit that happens this summer. We're set. CLA is in place. The following year. Uh, we will have to have uh, a new contract in place. Um, what we've been doing in the past is is working off of the county's contracts. We all have the same auditor. We don't have to do that, but I think that's I think they prefer that. Um, and I, I would recommend that we continue down that same road. Uh, we can always look at who that auditor is, and then if we want to, we can bid it out on our own. So it's a little repetitive there, but hopefully that answered any questions that you that you have. Mr. Hart, Mr. Hartlove, thank you very much for the explanation. It made sense to me. Committee members, anybody else have questions or comments? No. OK, hearing none, Ms. Barr, would you like to close on this? Again, I just wanted to bring this um, information to the committee because it is in the audit committee charter with respect to making sure that um, we participate in the selection of the external auditor. So I appreciate Mr. Hartlove bringing the committee up to date uh, with respect to where we are with the contract. So thank you, Mr. Hartlove and Mr. McMillian. Mr. Hartlove, thank you very much for attending. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Barr, please proceed with the FY23 quarter three work plan update. Thank you. I'll wait for Ms. Gober to bring the uh, document up on the screen, please. Yes, thank you. So this FY23 um, a quarter three update provides information on our audit activities from July 1 of 2022 through March 31 of 2023. And it, it includes any audit reports issued during this period, the status of current audit projects and projects not yet started or projects that have been deferred. Additionally, as we progress through the year, some projects may become more critical to complete than others, creating a shift in project prioritization. Consequently, project start and end dates become revised based on this updated prioritization and the need to complete unplanned projects. I just wanted to remind everybody that all reports issued as of March 31, 2023 have been posted to our web page. And additionally, we provide regular updates related to our completed projects at each audit committee meeting throughout the year. 
Ms. Gover, if you could please scroll down to page three of the document and I will just go uh, right down the list from the top of the page. So thank you. Um, up just a little bit more with respect to the investigations, I just want to point out that um, Mr. Fletcher is going to be giving his report um, after I go through the, this work plan update. So now I'm on item number two, the Office of Purchasing. Uh, we issued our report related to the Office of Purchasing Contracts Agreements and non-real estate leases on March 15th. If the committee will recall that audit, uh, that audit was a satisfactory audit rating that was given. With respect to item number three, we issued our report on February 17, 2023, related to the ESOL new immigrant registration and enrollment process, and this received an audit rating of needs improvement. Item number four, the CTE accreditation project is scheduled to begin in this quarter, quarter four. Item number seven, the special education dispute resolution project uh, that was started in quarter three and, and is now currently in the planning and information gathering stage. Items number eight and 10 were combined. Uh, the student enrollment and registration process and the student residency shared domicile processes. The audit is complete at this time and the report is now under supervisory review. We do anticipate presenting this report at the um, May audit committee meeting. Item number nine, the program and services to prevent and mitigate health barriers to learning. This project is also in the planning and information gathering stages in this quarter. Item number 11, this project with the Office of um, Staffing. We currently have this project in the field work stage. However, I want to bring to the committee's attention that we're probably going to have to pause our progress on this audit due to unplanned projects in the human resource area that need to be completed by this fiscal year end. And I'll talk about this a little bit more down in the unplanned area section of this report. Items number 12 and 15 are also going to be are, are going to be deferred due to this unplanned project in the human resource area. With respect to item number 13, the MSDE certification process, we did actually finish the original objective and it was in the re, uh, re, reporting phase. Um, however, we have added another objective that we thought was very important to ensure that teachers are paid accurately in accordance with their credentials in the growth chart when compared to published salary scales. And because certification has the responsibility to update and ma maintain this information, we added this objective to this audit. <clears throat> Item number 16 is under supervisory review. We anticipate that we will be able to present this report at the May audit committee meeting. Item num number 17 um, is in the field work stage, and we anticipate that we would be able to complete this audit and present our report related, related to this audit at our June audit committee meeting. Item number 19, the SRO program. The committee will recall that we issued our report on March uh, 15, 2023, and it received an audit rating of needs improvement. Item number 20, the school safety measure programs. We deferred this project to FY24 next year due to time constraints related to the unplanned projects. Item number 21, the use of facilities program. We are conducting field work related to this uh, use of facilities program and we anticipate being able to present this report at the June audit committee meeting. <clears throat> Item number 22, the change order for construction consultants, managers, and contractors is currently in the um, planning stage, and we anticipate a completion date sometime in late July of 2023. Item number 23, with respect to bus routes, that was deferred due to the implementation of, of Busware, which is a new transportation bus route software program and actually was replaced with item number 24 below, which is the bus contractor management project. We anticipate the start of, of this project sometime during this quarter, 
with an anticipated completion date sometime in July of 2023. And I'm going to go over if you could scroll down to the unplanned special projects. So we had three unplanned or special projects so far this year um, and as of March 31. We worked with the Office of Third Party Billing to assist them with the MSDE required self-monitoring test and we issued our report on January 30, 2023. And I wanted to point out to the committee that our assistance with this project will no longer be required move, moving forward. And um, item number two, I alluded to a little bit earlier when I was talking about the HR projects up above. Uh, we are currently in the process of re re reviewing potential overpayments um, to individuals. And this project is the primary reason for the deferral of the HR projects mentioned above. Um, additionally, the time that it's going to take to complete this project has impacted the other projects, causing them to be deferred as well. And I mentioned those above. I mean, we're actually looking at over 4,600 individuals. So you, you can imagine the amount of time that that's going to take. Um, item number three, we actually completed the certification of the student member of, of the board voting results back in March of March 24, 2023. And then the ongoing general office responsibilities that we have, we are continuing to uh, refine our processes related to the impl implementation of our uh, work paper sister team system, sorry, system teammate plus. And we attend our regular monthly meetings. Um, I have the meetings with with executive management on a monthly basis. We have our staff meetings and our audit committee meetings, and then we have to attend required staff development activities. So we're, we keep up to date on those as well for our ongoing CPE. So that concludes my report with respect to where we are with the um, risk based audit. OK, or FY 23. Thank you, any... Ms. Yes, thank, thank you, Ms. Barr. Committee members, any questions? Any questions? OK, Ms. Barr, thank you very much. We're going to proceed. Mr. Fletcher, please proceed with the FY 23 quarter three investigations update. Thank you, Mr. McMillian and Ms. Gover. If you would please pull that document up. And yes, that's perfect. And on the third page of this document is where actually we're going to start. I should have a table. It'll be paid. Yep, this page right here. If you slide down to our table one a little bit further, that would be perfect right there. Excellent. So, uh, this is a report of our year-to-date investigative statistics as of the end of the third quarter of 2023. Um, throughout the end of the third quarter, we received a total of 87 cases. Table 1 here summarizes those cases, which show that 23 have been kept for investigation by internal audit, 7 were referred to BCPS management for their investigation, and 57 were actually closed without investigation as the information provided was not in the purview of the hotline. And so table one also shows that of the 23 cases kept for investigation by internal audit, seven were a conflict of interest, one was a falsification of records, five were payroll fraud or overtime abuse, three were management issues, five were misuse of property or resources, one was property and purchasing practice concerns. And then lastly, one was theft. Now, as we slide down to our next page, we have another table here, table two. Perfect. If you go down just a tad more, this is kind of a big, ugly one. Perfect. 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 Thank you. So as we move on to table two, we note that in addition to the 87 new cases received this fiscal year, 13 cases remained open from the previous fiscal year, resulting in 100 open cases throughout FY23. And so far in FY23, 86 of those 100 cases have been closed, resulting in 14 cases which are still open as of the end of the third quarter. Now, for the Office of Internal Audit Investigations, which are he here in this first column, 
30 were open throughout the fiscal year and 22 have been closed, resulting in eight that are still open as of the end of the third quarter. Now details for all 30 of those cases are available in table three, which are on pages four and five um, of nine of this document. Now for the management investigations here in the second column, eight were open throughout the fiscal year and four have been closed, resulting in four that are still open as of the end of the third quarter. And details for all eight of those cases are on table four, which is below on page six of nine uh, of this document. And then lastly, the cases that are outside the purview of the hotline, those are those are the ones that we close with our memos to file. Those are in this final column. And 62 were open throughout the fiscal year and 60 have been closed, resulting in two that are still open as of the end of the third quarter. And details for all of those cases, uh, all 62 of those cases are available in table five, which is on pages seven, eight and nine. Uh, of this this document here again this document is available out on board docs as well and mr mcmillian with that i turn it back over to you for any questions great committee members any questions any questions no questions from Ms. lichter and i don't hear from Ms. joe's okay mr fletcher thank you very much for your report my pleasure thank you okay now we're on to item number five announcements the next meeting of the audit committee will be on Tuesday, May 23rd, 2023 at 4.30 p.m. Item number six, administrative function. I will now entertain a motion to convene an administrative function session to discuss the investigations conducted by the staff of the Office of Internal Audit that are required by the audit committee charter. May I have that motion, please? Yes, motion made, Victor. Okay, motion made and seconded, Ms. Jones. Second. Thank you. It has been properly moved and seconded that we convene an administrative function session to discuss these matters. Ms. Jamison, will you please call the roll? Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Joes? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next item is the approval of the administrative function session minutes, which were. Excuse me, Mr. McMillian. 